What's up guys, we are here with another Marvel Strike Force video and in this video we are going to talk about uh, some very exciting stuff the preview blog for 2023 part 2 Siege on Battle World so this is what's to come for Marvel Strike Force in the upcoming months between 6 months to 9 months and we are also going to try to predict what exactly is going to happen which month so you can prepare ahead in order for these big changes coming to the game we have not only new characters coming to the game but we also have announcements of game modes and we have retraction of information which is also interesting which was the new progression system so we're going to try to break down all that information and ahead above my head i'm going to try to put uh, my expectations for when these features will come to the game and uh, when they'll be delivered right so as always if you like information on these videos make sure you share it with your friends on facebook and discord if you're new to my channel make sure you subscribe for more mouse force content and make sure you smash that like button like a boss now now the boss we seem to have right here is silver surfer symbiote this character is coming very very soon maybe and we can talk about him already so silver surfer symbiote sssss and I think this character will come around uh, March, maybe mid-March, because that's the, the time frame for the new mid-March, early March. Let's let's just put March, because I think that's when uh, Silver Surfer will arrive. Now, before March, even before March, I think we're going to get the, the level cap uh, increase to 100 in uh, February. I apologize for any <laughs> mistakes, but uh, you guys let me know the the grammar Nazis in the comments below. I think uh, will uh, give me some uh, ad pain. Okay, so anyway, so I think uh, we are going to get uh, the level 100 definitely before we get uh, Silver Surfer. Now let's move on. Let's see exactly what we have on this blog. So turning on the the corner, this is them listening more to the community trying to focus more on what the players want to, to do with their game rather than what Scopely thinks is making the most money. And this has definitely been a good experience overall. I think the game is getting better and better over time. And now they just have to focus on improving the early game experience so new players and returning players can come back to Marvel Strike Force and catch up as fast as possible. This is, I think it's a big problem that the game still has is that the time that it takes you from level 60 to level 90 plus it just takes way too long and it's it's not really necessary i understand it's slow just so, so they can catch up but uh, yeah they can catch up and learn the mechanics now we have right here fifth anniversary they want the game for last for another five years so i guess uh, we'll be sticking around and when i have to take my kid for the school for the first time <laughs> <laughs> we'll be doing that while playing Marvel Strike Force, of course. Now, we have the player's voice, the player council. Uh, we have some situations with that. They have been more engaging with uh, the envoys. I'm not an envoy, so I don't know, but this at least is what they are saying. And uh, based on that uh, increased communication, we have seen improvements with that. So, which, which is all great. Now, we have Siege on the Battle World. And this is going to be a new game mode. And if you play Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, you might have seen something similar to this, which is the Territory Battles. Now, the Territory Battles, they are a PvP game mode where two alliances face each other and they are competing against each other to clear the, the territory of the other one. And while the Siege on Battle World seems to be PvE, I think it's going to have some PvP components. This is slated to be released in 2024, so my prediction for Siege of Battle World is on, uh, on in summer. So Siege, I don't know how to write that. Siege of uh, Battle World. I'm gonna say that's gonna be in what in uh, July. July, yeah, I think July would be a good. Uh, we we'll just let's just put Siege in July. I think that's going to be the, the best prediction. This was when uh, the Scourgers were uh, first released. The first Scourge was for Morgan of Fae. And it would make sense for them to release uh, another PvE game mode by that time. Okay, so, so far it's looking pretty good. 
Okay, so slate to be released in 2024. Seas of Battle World. We will have to uh, a galgamation of uh, planets and locations. So that means that you're gonna be facing new environments. This is something that Marvel Strike Force has been missing in, out in a while, which is having different uh, backgrounds. And then you'll be facing massive and powerful bosses. Now, some people are complaining about the first boss being Magneto. But I guess these people actually don't understand the comics. Magneto is a Omega level mutant and he's very powerful because of that. So some people are saying that, uh, oh, we should have Onslaught rather than Magneto. They are both Omega level. The difference is that, uh, well, Magneto is a human and uh, Onslaught is a psionic uh, creature, right? So he's made of energy and because he's made of energy, he has different abilities, but uh, they are uh, they they have the the same range of powers or magnitudes of powers is just uh, how much you can do with those i don't know it's uh, it's really nonsensical like we could have here magneto or a storm or a strife or a apocalypse or i mean there are so many characters that uh, are omega level and could be bosses it's just people that don't understand how the the characters work and of course, maybe someday we'll see Onslaught, but it's more likely that he'll be first a Dark Dimension character rather than uh, being uh, presented here on Battleworld. Anyway, so you can see from this that uh, while this is a PvE ev event or a game mode, it's going to have uh, features of competition. So once again, you can see this is pretty much copy-paste from Territory Battles. And it also works with time zones. And this is why I think that it's a PV mode masqueraded, is a PVP mode masqueraded as a PV mode. Because once again, like why do you have the time zones? Are we going to compete in terms of alliances? Also, you have here additional points if you're using Thanos, Proxima, Midnight, and so on. So I think you can see here mutant placement. Once again, this is pretty much Territory Battles 2.0. So once again, I think there will be some kind of, of uh, competition between alliances in order to, to clear this up. Might be the a PvP mode masqueraded as a PV mode. We'll see. But overall, I like the design. The, the backgrounds and everything looks very, very solid. Here we have these gold orbs. I'm not sure if this is the new gold orbs. If you guys don't know, in the data mines, we have information that now we're going to have a gold orb that the minimum drops 1 million and the maximum is going to be 100 million. And uh, this means that uh, the level cap increase, the level 95 to level 100, is going to be probably like 8 million gold or something like that, close to 10 million gold. So <laughs> be, be on the lookout for that. Okay, so these first images look very, very promising. And then we have the, the, the characters. This is like, if you don't play Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, this is very strange to explain. You just drop your characters to be there. I'm not sure if they're going to do something like this because I found that very boring. It, it was strange. It's just the people that have the most TCP will, uh, will win. It's just a, a matter of having the, the biggest amount of TCP to drop on, on these places. But we'll see. It looks interesting. At least the maps look very interesting. And I'm definitely excited for this game mode. But more questions than answers because of these war time zones and things like that. Okay, let's move on. We have the Extreme X-Men with the Nightcrawler. And uh, I predicted that Nightcrawler was coming very, very soon. I thought that he was going to be on uh, X-Force, but uh, no, it's not X-Force. It's uh, Extreme X-Men. So that's also very interesting. And uh, supposedly, these are the rumors, Cyclops is going to get a rework. We'll have more information about uh, this team on Friday because the patch should be next week. Patch should be on the next Wednesday. So we'll see if that's going to be the case or not. Or if they are going to use this new method of just deploying a little bit of data instead, instead of uh, making like a major patch released. Either way, Nightcrawler is coming to the game and it's going to be a raid character. It seems to be the case because once again, the new game modes, they are going to take a while until they show up. And right now, people are struggling a little bit with the raids. Not a big deal in my opinion, if you ask me. 
Okay, so we have more opportunities to choose uh, new characters and teams in the future, the same way like we did uh, with the Silver Surfer, Castle, Thanos, and so on. We might uh, help uh, Scopely decide which are the original characters that we want to see in the future. And uh, this is the symbiote Silver Surfer. Do you guys like it? Do you guys don't like it? I think it looks okay. I actually thought it was going to look um, slightly different, but uh, I guess. I guess it's similar to the, um, how do you call that guy? The God Butcher, but a silver version. And instead of having a, the all black sword, it has this scepter or whatever this thing is. But anyway, we'll, we'll wait to see. Now, we already talked about the Sym Symbiote Silver Surfer in March. This is going to be the bio ray team, bio ray team. Now, we just mentioned the Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler is coming next patch, so this is going to be December of 2023. And it's the Extreme X-Men. Extreme X-Men, okay. Extreme. Super cool, super rad. Okay, cool. Let's move on. Let's take a look at what else we have. Escape from... Uh, Kyle, Kyle, I don't know how to spell this, but this is going to be similar to Avengers Tower and Sword Satellite. The difference is that instead of using five characters, you're going to use only three characters. And of course, they said that this is going to favorite the, the veteran players, but uh, that's not a bad thing. And the new players and the mid-range players need to learn this. You enjoy things when you overcome challenges. If something is a challenge at the beginning, you are going to get a lot more happy when things come around for the second time and you are able to overcome not only what you did, but also everything going forward that you improved upon. This is like basic human psychology and the people that think it's lame that they cannot clear everything on the first day, you, you don't know exactly what you're talking about. It's a me, it's it, it, you think it's something good for you but it's definitely not and this is more enjoyable now if you see marvel side force as a short-term plan if this is something that you are just doing for a couple of weeks or so sure i understand that but if you are thinking about long term if you actually want to enjoy the game because you like turn-based uh, rpgs where uh, you can collect your favorite marvel characters then uh, it's going to be better this way that Throughout time, you see your improvement and you see you overcoming the challenges that you were not able to do in the past. Now, this is definitely something interesting, but this is not Tower. A lot of people are thinking that this is like Tower. This is definitely not Tower because they explain right here that uh, you'll be able to use the same characters on multiple levels. So this is pretty much what uh, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes Conquest mode. I think it's called Conquest. This is pretty much what it is, and that is going to allow you to use the same characters and uh, defeat different floors. And after each floor, sometimes you can buff your characters or uh, heal up. It depends. It depends on which route uh, um, Scopely wants to take this or Boundless wants to take this game mode. There are many other game modes like this. Every time you complete a stage, you get like uh, or a health pack or you get uh, additional damage or you get uh, additional resistance or anything like that and i think uh, the name it's called on star wars galaxy of heroes is is this one so you can see right here you have levels of progression and every time you complete one level you get uh, buffs or uh, debuffs that are going to improve uh, your journey and if you lose one of those characters that you are using then you just have to use another one now what's interesting about this version of marvel strike force is that you are only using three characters so that's great uh, that's greatly going to reduce the amount uh, of uh, teams you can make and you really have to kind of try to focus full power on uh, on one of the teams so what uh, scopely could do here is just make uh, sure that uh, you are using different characters. So one would be like for uh, city characters, other for uh, misty characters, other for uh, global characters, other for tech characters. Have like a wide variety of these. The problem with uh, this type of events is that uh, if you are going to tune in each node for the challenges that we are facing, they are just going to waste way too much time. So hopefully they, they make a, a version 
that is easily approachable and we can have fun. I think this is definitely going to be fun. And if they rather go with that route of conquest rather than tower, that will be way more enjoyable and, and definitely a different experience. Okay, so this uh, escape from uh, Kaln. Ooh, the time frame for this one. So the Avenger Tower in the past, it was released on March. So we could see some big patch on March. So maybe Kaln late March, April. April, maybe. We don't know for sure how long this is in development, but uh, it seems like they have this one more figured out than uh, the, um, the than the battle world. We'll have to wait and see, but this one might come earlier than the battle world. But once again, it really depends on how far they are into the development and if they are going to keep the way of the tower or the way of the conquest. If it was conquest, I, I think it's more fun, but we have to wait and see. Okay, so we're going to keep it in April. Moving on, we have Dark Dimension 7. Dark Dimension 7, we know pretty much when it's going to come. So Dark Dimension 7 is going to be May. In May. DD7. And uh, with Dark Dimension 7, we are also going to get uh, Mephisto. Now, I thought Mephisto is going to be unlocked like uh, Apocalypse. And I thought I, I really hope that Apocalypse is not the only character released uh, with that one year long journey. Uh, that would be very disappointing. But uh, here we are. So Mephisto Dark Dimension 7, another Missy character. And uh, his traits, or the traits required for Dark Dimension 7, are going to be City, non-mythic, non-legendary, global with the same restrictions, cosmic with the same restrictions, and then we have legendary. This means horsemen and not, not horsemen alike. You're going to have a tier list and so on for these characters, so you can start preparing for these. And then meaty characters. Now, meaty characters is going to be the characters that you don't unlock uh, through scourges or through dark dimensions, right? Or So it's going to be the Ultrons, Doctor Doom, Dormammu, Super Scroll, Ultimus, Apocalypse, Kestrel. Uh, Kessel is a surprise. I'm actually surprised that Spider Weaver is not here, but because she's farmable already, I guess uh, it will not be the case, but we'll see. So these are the meaty characters that we have right now, and this is a new trait that uh, these characters will have. This is something that we have been talking about for a very long time, and it's finally coming to the game, and this can come at any point in time. It can even come next patch because it does not affect the gameplay until Dark Dimension 7 arrives. Okay, moving on, we have quality of life improvements. Most of these improvements are for uh, uh, organizing a roster, helping out new players to understand exactly what they have to do and so on, and uh, making sure that uh, you have that uh, faster progression at, uh, and faster learning, uh, learning experience when you are uh, in playing the game for the first time which is definitely helpful but i would rather see i would rather see no this is fine for me but i would also like to see that uh, isolate uh, changing options now we are already talking about quality of life improvements so that means in terms of game modes it's over like the the content of the game something that i find very disappointing is that they remove the progression system and the progression system we are still waiting for some kind of mods where you can build uh, the characters the way you want uh, by increasing their stats, for example, additional resistance or additional health or additional crit, uh, things like that, like we have in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. We also don't have any news on uh, Isoate Purple, which is something that has been teased for almost two years. And that shows how complicated they made Isoate Blue level three, four and five. They made it so complicated that now it's almost impossible to, to get Isoate Purple out. And uh, so we don't have mods, we don't have any announcements of the Isolate Purple, and uh, we don't have any other progression system like uh, specializations like we had in Marvel Future Revolution, which is also a disappointing uh, announcement. But uh, here we are. This is what we have for now. We'll see if uh, new, new announcements will, make in, will be made in the future. 
Uh, and I was really expecting that, like from all this content, not having a new progression system, that was a little bit disappointing. So quality of life improvements, website improvements, the the new features on the website here, they look a little bit strange, like recruit alliance. OK, I'm not sure. I'm not a big fan of this because it just requires so much ver vertical space. So they should organize this in a different way or maybe change this zone to the to the right or to the left of this menu because the amount of vertical space it requires is huge and on some mobile devices it does not work properly so i don't know where they test this out if it was on desktop even on desktop it looks dumb right it it's way too down for you to, to figure out and uh, and sometimes on the website if you zoom in you cannot even press on this part of the of the menu so they, they really have to test out more devices, maybe take some uh, feedback from uh, content creators and envoys and so on. But that's what we have for now. But overall, I think this is important. Recruiting is still a pain in the ass. And uh, sometimes the worst part is really how you advertise for, uh, for the people you are looking at. You have to go to Facebook, you have to go to Discord, you have to go to uh, sometimes even to Telegram. And it's just so annoying to, to do the recruitment. Hopefully this will uh, help uh, with that. And uh, wrapping up, uh, there's a lot more coming next year. We are really excited about it. So yeah, we're going to wait and see. But so far, this is the prediction that I have for uh, the upcoming schedule. So once again, Extreme X-Men in December of 2023. Level 100 in February of uh, 2024. We th I didn't put here, but we can also get the gear tier 19, maybe gear tier 19 in February and uh, level 100 in uh, in January. So because Scopely, they really want to sell more gold and things like that. So it's possible. Then uh, the bio team uh, with the symbiote silver surfer in March. Kaln uh, game mode uh, in April, Dark Dimension 7 in May and Siege in uh, July. So. This is, this is my prediction for the schedule of Marvel Strike Force in the upcoming months. This goes all the way to July of next year. And, and that should be the moment when we get the, the first part of the 2024 schedule for Marvel Strike Force. But you guys let me know in the comments below how excited you are about all of these new game modes, new teams and new ways of interacting with the game. Do you guys play Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes? Are you aware of some of these game modes I mentioned? Let me know all that in the comments below. And as always, if you like the information on this video, make sure you share it with your friends on Facebook and Discord. If you are new to my channel, make sure to subscribe for more Mouse Force content. And I'll catch you guys later.